to say to get things kicked yeah. off. But all right, so we are heading out of California. We spent the last little over a week in, in an RV park in just uh, in Desert Palm Springs. Desert Hot Springs. Desert Hot Springs. Desert Hot Springs. And right had, outside of Palm Springs. Right. And our plan was to, um, you know, stay here and hang out and go to the Joshua Tree. And we did. And we got some clips of great hikes there. But um, we're kind of glad to be getting out of here. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Um, the weather's been beautiful. But, boy, you know, first of all, everything's super expensive. Well, particularly gas. Gas is at least a, a dollar. Or diesel is yeah, at least. D diesel is basically five dollars a gallon five dollars a gallon it's just it's crazy expensive um, the other thing that we've noticed almost as soon as we cross the border is people throw their trash out the window There's every garbage everywhere garbage everywhere and it's it's like when you get to the shishi neighborhoods of Palm Springs there's not a blade of grass out of place. But when you're just in regular town, uh, just as we're driving along here, there is, and it's not the kind of garbage that blows out of the back of your pickup truck accidentally. I mean, there's couches and old dead RVs and just people drive crap out into the desert and just dump it. And it's like complete disregard for <laughs> the, the land and the people living there. And we, we heard somebody else talking saying, that it's not just here, but it's in other places in California the same way when yeah. they went to different places. So. Not that I would have expected that, because no, I don't know, no. California is supposed to be, it's sort of in my mind, it's the land of healthy and... Clean and environmental right, and all that kind of stuff. Right, and I'm telling you, there isn't a stretch on the, on the freeway or on the roads that we've been on, other than in when you're kind of in the ritzy town part of Palm Springs, there's not a, a, a piece of ground that hasn't got some kind of garbage on it and um, it's it's just it's kind of disgusting so don't want to label the entire state as being slobs so we're not going to but no heartbreak about leaving here so we've also changed our direction and we're heading instead of back towards uh, Tucson which was our plan uh, we decided to go to Lake Havasu and so that's where we're going today and maybe we'll find something fun. Yep, so that's that's one of one of the benefits of not having reservations or committed to different places. We can change our mind on a moment's notice. We will figure out what we want to do there yep. and how much time we want to spend there and we'll share with you what we learn about Lake Havasu. Yep. So until then, see you later. So 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 we are on an adventure. Yes, we are. And we're still in Lake Havasu. Don't know if we've told anybody that yet or not. A little bumpy. A little bumpy. Um, <clears throat> we're in Lake Havasu, which has been a surprisingly kind of fun town. There's a lot going on here um, that we weren't anticipating. Didn't really know. Nope. And so we're having fun. So we are on our way right now to the Winterfest Pyrotechnics something convention. Or other. Yeah, whatever. <clears throat> and basically they do this every winter and it's just a huge, it's it's people who um, do pyrotechnics for a living and they come and they do this convention, but then spectators get to enjoy watching fireworks yes. three or four nights in a row. Yep. This is our first night going, so we don't know, but it should be pretty impressive. We've, we've, we've been told, someone told us the other day that it's like, they said, imagine the best um, finale fireworks you've ever seen and then see one after another after another another of those cool so we'll see if it lives up to that kind of hype yeah um, but we're kind of excited to see what's going on we are and so we've got kind of a busy uh, weekend coming up with a bunch of fun stuff mm -hmm. but we'll be capturing the uh, pyrotechnics tonight on the on the video for people and then we'll just show you some other surprises tomorrow yep. and other fun stuff yep. we're gonna be doing so um, the line is starting right now to get into there so we'll uh, keep you informed on what's happening by the way I'll show you people like to do dispersed camping here uh, for a variety of reasons obviously we've talked about before how cheap it is here's somebody camp camping up they're camping up on the hill it's all within walking distance of this um, the pyrotechnics place which is at the Walk, walking and viewing distance so they don't even have to walk right they, they, they don't even have here. so they can just sit up here by their rigs and these are people that are all boondocking we are also in a boondocking uh, there you can see them up on the hill there 
We're also in a boondocking spot, which is, well, see those folks are enjoying the view right from there with their own beverages and their dog. <clears throat> we are in a boondocking spot too, which is very convenient to Lake Havasu. We're like five or 10 miles from Lake Havasu, um, but it is a giant gravel parking lot. Yep. But the people are friendly yes. and it's quiet at night for the most part. And so no complaints. All right, we're going into the Speedway, which is where it's going to be. We'll keep you posted. This is attempt number two mm -hmm. to go see the Rockabilly Reunion mm -hmm. in downtown Lake Havasu. We're actually at Lake Havasu City Park. We tried it yesterday. <clears throat> was it yesterday? Yep. And the line was so long that the amount of time we would be able to spend there before going back to the fireworks last night wasn't going to be enough. So we bagged it and now we're going for attempt number two. Yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll beat some of the crowds. We'll see. Yeah, we don't know. But either way, we can wait in line today. We don't have the time restriction. So. Exactly. So we will see what we see at the Rockabilly Reunion yep. in Lake Havasu City. All right. So we got in way easier than yesterday. Yep. I think, it, I'm hoping it's just because we're early. I think we're early, yep. Yeah, not because it's a bum day. But um, one, one band just played, another one is setting up. Yeah, so, and it looks like kind of rock and roll stuff. And we got our little chairs set up so we can listen to the music. But also, we can just leave them while we go wander also, around. So, we're enjoying, um, we enjoyed our first fair snack and um, had a fabulous corn dog. It was the freshest corn dog I've ever had. So, we give a thumbs up so far to the Rockabilly reunion. We're going to go wander around. We'll catch you later. Yep. Maybe not with a visor. It's a little better. day to go on Sunday than Saturday uh -huh. because it wasn't as crowded right. and I assume it didn't affect the number of bands that were there and the merchandise that was there yeah. but it was not crowded at all we had plenty of space it didn't feel like you were like in line for a lot of stuff no. uh, so we never we never really waited in line at all no we didn't we did have an excellent corn dog mm -hmm. um, and the bands were enjoyable um, but the bottom line is I think it was too expensive. Yeah, but it's something to do for a day, so. Yeah, I don't regret it, no. but, I, but I don't think it was worth, we paid $25 each to go in, so 50 bucks to go in and listen to a few bands and look at um, some t-shirts and um, other merchandise. I'm glad we went, but it, w it wouldn't rank high on my must-dos no. um, for, no. for Lake Havasu. No. 
to your point earlier though, the definitely pyro, the pyrotechnic show was definitely a, a must see. Yeah, definitely from the grandstand. Yeah. yeah. So we are <clears throat> in Sarah Park. Sarah Park outside of Lake Havasu, and um, it's been flipping windy for the mm -hmm. last three or four days at least, mm -hmm. like 40 mile an hour winds. So we haven't really wanted to get out. Now we're just too crazy. Still a little windy, but not bad. <clears throat> However, we have got this little park right near us. And the thing is, it's kind of a gravel pit, but as gravel pit pits go, it's pit. kind of a nice gravel pit. This is the little ravine that we are in. So as you can see, it's gravel pity. That's the route we came, but still it's kind of cool. Feels like, I don't know, moonscape or something. Um, but we will um, continue to film in case there's something really exciting that happens. <laughs> Apparently we are on a hike called The Crack, and looks like it's aptly named. So Tom is going to venture forth down this thing where there's actually a rope anchored up here for people who are either going down or going up. So. Mm -hmm. Nice job. Yeah. I opted out because I'm a, I'm a scaredy cat. I filmed most of it down there. It gets pretty thin in a few spots and there's a couple a couple good scamper spots. Mm -hmm. Weren't too hard to get through, but you yep. could have had some difficulties. Yes. So. Dang it. All right. All right, so we are heading back? Yeah, we're okay. back. All right. Well, we decided to come back <clears throat> to the um, to the hike here in Sarah Park outside Lake Havasu. Uh, we really enjoyed the one yesterday. Um, we went through the crack, and today we're doing a, uh, what's called the watershed loop, where we're going down through a um, well, I guess a watershed and a ravine, and then we're going to come back through that crack. So here's the view for today. I'll see Tom down there. And so we're gonna head out there and it's about a four mile round trip and we'll film whatever is interesting. Great. Well, we didn't make it to the crack. For some reason it wasn't on this route like we thought it was, but. So while we missed the crack, apparently we found the hole. <laughs> there is a arch there. It appears that we might have stumbled upon the advertised crack. It just uh, might be a different one, perhaps. We don't know. So we're going to explore into this little uh, slot canyon.
sand Rolled your eyes and tore my face Havasu, lots of stuff to do. We've also had some downtime, which is okay. <clears throat> Have downtime anytime. But today, we're finally getting to do something that I've been wanting to do for a while, mm -hmm. which is get out on the water. We're going on a boat tour. We're on a boat, mm -hmm. as we say in the Midwest. I'm, I'm hoping we don't get stranded on an island. Maybe if we're on the SS Minnow. Yeah. Um, we are going, we're taking a, <clears throat> a cruise to a place called the Copper Canyon. It's a short cruise. Well, it's not really a cruise, it's a boat tour. And it's to Copper Canyon, which is supposed to be quite beautiful. We really wanted to do a longer uh, boat tour earlier in the week, um, but the, it was super windy and chilly. And by the time it got nice, you couldn't get a reservation on a boat. So um, anyway, we're looking forward to it. We'll share with you what we see on this and hopefully it'll be beautiful. Yeah. I think the, cam yeah. the canyon is supposed to be pretty. Yeah. So um, off we go to another adventure. So while we take a float down the Bridgewater Channel into Lake Havasu and to Copper Canyon, we'll give you a little history lesson, very brief, about Lake Havasu. Lake Havasu was formed by the construction of the Parker Dam in 1938, and in 1963, Robert McCulloch, who owned McCulloch Motors and later the Chainsaw Company, uh, saw Lake Havasu and thought it'd be a great place to test his engines. He also thought that the land around Lake Havasu had great potential for an emerging city. He went to work with a um, developer and Lake Havasu City was established in 1963. Lake Havasu's claim to fame though is its London Bridge. By the end of the 18th century, the old London Bridge in London needed to be replaced. So. Uh, in 1967, the Common Council of the City of London began to look for potential buyers for the London Bridge. As Lake Havasu City's founder, the chainsaw magnate, Robert McCulloch, saw a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. He believed correctly, as history shows us, that reconstructing this massive icon in the new city would attract tourists and prospective buyers of residential lots. After the bridge was dismantled, each of its 10,276 exterior granite blocks from the original bridge was shipped to Lake Havasu City. Each block was numbered before the bridge was dismantled. The bridge was built as a conventional structure clad with the original granite to retain its antique look. The bridge was constructed on a dry piece of land. The land was then dredged from underneath the bridge, creating Bridgewater Channel and the island across the bridge. On October 10, 1971, the completed bridge was formally dedicated in a ceremony attended by over 50,000 American and British spectators and dignitaries. So we just got back from our um, little boat ride mm -hmm. to Gold Can or Copper Canyon. Mm -hmm on a kind of a pontoon boat. Nice little ride, about an hour and a half or so. Interesting history about um, the London Bridge, Lake Havasu, mm -hmm. McCulloch. Anyway, I, I, as a boat tour go, I, goes, I think it was nice just to get out on the water mm -hmm. and it was pretty cheap. Uh, pretty I think it was 30 bucks a piece. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'd recommend it. Mm -hmm. We used Sunset Charter, something like that. Yeah. And we had a good narrator who talked about a lot of the yep. history switch that was interesting. So, there we go. There we go. All right. Well, we have departed from Lake Havasu. Lake Havasu. And uh, we are heading off to our next adventure. But wanted to share just kind of our assessment of Lake Havasu and our experience there after being there for three weeks. Um, what are your thoughts? What are your, your reactions? Um, it's a really fun happening place. They got a lot of stuff going on there. Um, you know, seems like they've got events 
just about every weekend weekend um, stuff some stuff going on during the week yeah you know it's a, a town of 50,000 people and the thing that strikes me is there's such a variety of things that are going on all the time that it really isn't just they don't seem to be things that are just to attract tourists. There's a lot of stuff that the people who live there would enjoy, like oh, the yeah. pickleball courts, like the there's con, there's music all the time. There's a the aquatic center there has pickleball, some kind of water entertainment, but they do concerts all the time. We haven't gone to any, but they are well rated. There's music all over the place. We um, went just walking downtown. There's bars with live music and and. We've gone to, as you know, we went to the Rockabilly Reunion. Yep. There was a, this last weekend, there was a bluegrass, bluegrass festival, which we didn't go to because we did other things. But just the wide variety. We've been to the pyrotechnics show. We've been to yep. hikes. Um, yep. So I would say that Lake Havasu is a place that is kind of a hidden gem. Yep. And I would go back to this if we were going to be in this area again. Yeah. But if you, if you want to go to a place that has a wide variety of things, has water, which really was nice to see from yeah. all the desert stuff we've been at. But So we're off to the next adventure. We'll tell you what that is coming up. But for now, we bid a fond adieu to Havasu. Yes, there we go.